Welcome to the PAG-NAG calculator. PAG and NAG stand for potential acoustical gain and needed acoustical gain, both of which are critical uh, calculations you need to make in uh, a conference room design or any audio system design. Let's talk about needed acoustical gain. That's what you want. That's what the client is telling you he wants to sound like. He wants an amplification level, typically loud enough. Let's introduce our three characters in this calculation. We have the principal, the, the CEO and president of the company. We have his valued right-hand man, the one who always pays attention and sits right at the table and pays close attention, also known as the brown noser. And then off to the back side, we have the guy that gets all the real work done. He's reading the funny papers. So we've got three people. The guy that's sitting right next to the president can hear him clearly because he's at a typical listening distance. And human psychology is such that people tend to talk loud enough for the person sitting closest to them. So these two hear each other fine. It's the guy at the end that we need to get the message through to. This is the amplification or the needed acoustical gain that we need to calculate. So needed acoustical gain is calculated. You go over to our little uh, graphic over here and you push on the button and that will bring out the needed acoustical gain worksheet. There are four values that you need to enter. The first one is the reference distance. This is how far the brown noser is sitting from the boss. He is uh, right now, according to this, at five feet, which would be typical for a conference room installation, maybe even closer. Then we have the reference level. This is how loud the boss is to the assistant. In other words, how loud does this guy hear this guy speak? And if you put it here, you can tell that he's got about 75 decibels. Then we have a reference distance that is the distance of the boss to the guy sitting farthest away. And in this case, it happens to be 20 feet. So if we are 20 feet away and someone 5 feet away is hearing at 75 decibels, how loud do we need to amplify the boss with a speaker over here to get 75 decibels to the guy sitting farthest away as though he were sitting right next to the boss. So you can click on the calculator button and it'll tell you you need 12 decibels of needed acoustical gain. Well, that's what you want. Now that is not necessarily what you get. That is what potential acoustical gain is. Potential acoustical gain, again, press on the little button and you'll get the worksheet for that. There's a number of factors that you have to fill in. One of them is already filled in. That is D sub O. That's the distance of the boss, the source, to the farthest listener. And that happens to be 20 feet. But there are other distances involved here. Now, I want you to notice, most importantly, that there are no calculations in this formula for anything electronic. Potential gain before feedback is strictly a function of distances, acoustical distances. How far is the source from X? How far is X from a speaker? All of these things become very important, but feedback is a function of distances and nothing more. So if somebody says, I've got a box that's going to make your uh, gain before feedback better, it might affect a distance at a particular frequency, but it is not going to overall change the system. That's why there's no electronic calculations in here. So let's look at the various factors we need to calculate. One is number of open mics. Every time you double the number of open mics in a sound system, you are going to lose three decibels of potential gain. So that's a factor. If you are using an automatic mixer, like the DM1612, DM1624, etc., you will get always the equivalent of one open mic. That's part of the auto mixer's function. D sub 1 happens to be the distance of the microphone to the closest loudspeaker carrying that microphone signal. D sub 2 is the closest loudspeaker carrying that microphone signal to the farthest listener. So in this case, there's two speakers, one over this end of the table, one over this end, and D sub 2 happens to be that distance. D sub O is the same as D sub O down here. It is the distance of the source to the farthest listener. And then finally, we have D sub S, the distance of the microphone to the source. This is a critical distance. For example, in the microphone I'm using right now, I'm situated about four inches from the microphone. If I back away four inches, I drop six dB. If I drop away again eight inches, doubling the distance, it's another six dB down. So distance to the microphone is critical in calculating the gain. So in this case, if we are one foot, one microphone, and the microphone is 12 feet from the closest loudspeaker carrying its signal, and the closest loudspeaker, the farthest listener, is 12 feet, and we're talking 20 feet away, 
and we have one foot from the boss to the microphone, we have a potential acoustical gain of, oops, let's calculate. As you can see, when we ran the calculation, we now have potential acoustical gain of 20 decibels, and we have needed acoustical gain of 12 decibels. As long as PAG is more than NAG, your potential gain exceeds your needed gain, you've got a working system. And typically, if you've got a potential gain of 20 decibels or better, you're going to have a sound system that's going to absolutely behave. Now, how does Mix Minus affect this? Mix Minus is where you might not route this microphone to this speaker, but instead route it only to this speaker. Well, what happens then is we no longer have D sub 1 being this distance to this distance of this microphone to this speaker, but rather this microphone to this speaker. All Mix Minus does is plays games with the PAGNAG calculation. So we can sit there and change this particular level to 20, the same as the distance from the microphone to this farthest speaker, all right? And then we can run the calculation again, and notice that we picked up another 4 decibels of potential acoustical gain. Well, that's far greater than what we needed. Now, that means we could, in fact, raise the level now to the guy sitting at the other end and get his attention off the funny papers. In fact, we could raise it a full 24 decibels. So we could make this 99 decibels again and run the calculation. And now, whoops, I went a little too much, 89 decibels again. And you notice now we're getting in close to our actual needed gain. Now the two numbers are basically equivalent. And uh, based on this, we, we're still two decibels low. So the best we can do in this particular sound system is going to be 87 decibels of gain, which isn't too bad. That's a pretty good loud system. So we run the calculation. Now they match exactly. So that's the maximum level we're going to be able to get to wake him up. By the way, 87 decibels is really loud. So that's a pretty effective system. What happens if we move the microphone? The purpose of the PAGNAT calculator is to allow you to both design a system and also present a system to a potential client or end user and convince them to not do the bad thing. And the bad thing is to move the microphones, for example, to the ceiling. What happens if we move the microphone back to its original 12 or maybe uh, even closer? Let's just say 12 for uh, argument's sake, and we go back and we recalculate. Now we've got 20 decibels of potential gain, but what happens if we move the microphone to the ceiling? And that's going to put the microphone 10 feet away. Well, 10 feet away is going to affect the, the gain to zero. In other words, you will get no potential gain in the system. That means the guy back here at this end of the system, even though you're talk the boss is talking to the microphone, it's 10 feet away. He will hear the boss through the microphone, through this speaker, but the level he will hear him at will be identical to the level he would hear as if the speaker wasn't already there. There is zero potential acoustical gain in the system. The Pagnan calculator has a conference room and also a venue, such as a performance hall. In this case, you have your loudspeaker exhibited here, your uh, talker here, your closest listener here, and your farthest listener falling asleep in the back row. What happens in a concert? Well, let's look at potential acoustical gain for a concert. Let's say this was a really large venue. And so where is the microphone going to be held? Well, typically in a concert, the microphone is held right up against the mouth. So we're looking at 0.1 feet as your D sub S. And then D sub 1, which is the distance of the, uh, micro uh, the speaker to the performer. It's a large stage. It might be as far away as 40 feet from the performer. D sub 2 is the distance to the guys in the cheap seats. Well, let's say it's a very large venue. Let's make it 400 feet. And D sub O is going to be just about the same, 400 feet. That's the speakers to the farthest listener, or the, uh, the talker to the largest, uh, farthest listener. So NOM would still be controlled by a talented mixer, so we'll assume the number of open mics will still be equal to 1. And if we hit calculate on this particular thing, we get 46 decibels of potential gain in the system. Now we have to change a few things. D sub O changes because it's always the same between the two calculations. Here we're saying we're only going to give them 75 decibels of required level. Well, actually, we could give them another uh, 8 decibels more in the cheap seat. So we can take that up to uh, 
say 83 decibels and calculate again and now look at this 46 decibels needed acoustical gain to get 83 dB 400 feet away why did we get such good gain here and we didn't get on the other well it all has to do with D sub S how far away that microphone is held we also have a power calculator the power calculators purpose is to put in the type of speaker being used and its ratings and how much peak power compensation you need. You put in how many speakers, so we've got two speakers. In this case, they have a sensitivity rating of 90, but you know, concert speakers, the good quality ones tend to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 decibels of sensitivity. So we'll change that to 100 dB at one watt at three feet. But it's a music system, so we're gonna need 20 decibels of peak power compensation. So we're gonna change that to 20. 20 decibels of peak power compensation means basically a, that it, you can handle up to 20 decibels more signal than your normal nominal level. So if they scream into the microphone or drop the microphone or bang into the drums exceptionally hard, you don't cause damage to your loudspeaker. So how much amplifier do we need for that? Well, we hit the calculation and we need 70,000 watts. And that's not atypical for a large concert system. It all depends on the sensitivity of the speakers. If we make that 103 decibels, you'll see an interesting correlation there. If we run that calculation again, look at that. It cut the power wattage in half. A three decibel difference means half as much amplifier is needed. If it was a really inefficient set of speakers, you would have a value so large that you would need a reactor in order to run the thing. So we have good potential acoustical gain in this system. We have plenty of power. And there you go. So the PagNags calculator is designed to help you design and present a design to a customer and talk them out of those microphones in the ceiling. This presentation was given by Gordon Moore in the nude. <laughs>